Hello everybody, uh, thanks to all for being here. And this webinar is part of the online training program Medinea On Air. It is co-founded by Erasmus Plus and produced by six partners from the Mediterranean region from France, Italy, Malta, Portugal, Slovenia and Turkey. Medinea On Air aims to provide specific preparation for classical musicians and improvisers to enrich young musicians' musical training with 38 live interactive webinars led by re-owned artists and high-qualified pedagogues. They are free and open to all upon registration. Um, my name is Yelda Özgen. Hello again. I'm a cellist and lecturer at Istanbul Technical University, uh, both in Turkish Music State Conservatory, there are two institutions, and also I'm the director of ITUMIAM, Dr. Ero Uçer Center for Advanced Studies in Music. Today we will have a webinar with my colleague and also my dear sister, Neva Özgen. Uh, she's a Kemanche player, I should say that she's an improviser and a lecturer at the same university. We are co-teaching at the moment uh, Turkish makam classes at MIAM and uh, today we would like to focus on Taksim genre in Turkish makam music. When we were thinking about this a particular title for this series, uh, we thought that this subject would draw the attention of many young musicians within the Medinia community or musicians around the world who are interested in improvising. Uh, before we start, I would like to remind you that you can ask your questions via the chat box or after the presentation, there will be an QA section where you can ask your own questions. This presentation will start with an introduction to Turkish makam music, followed by what is makam, and through the types of taksim, and finally focusing on classical taksim and tamburi Cemil Bey, with some musical examples. Hope you will enjoy it. Ah, so. First of all, before the uh, introduction, before the Turkish art music introduction, I would like to start with uh, an important scholar on Ottoman uh, music, Walter Feldman's description on Taksim. The Taksim is often referred to in the musicological literature of the Middle East as an instrumental improvisation. The Taksim has been known as a major musical genre during the 19th and 20th centuries in most of the countries of the Middle East, which had been incorporated within the Ottoman Empire, especially Turkey, Syria, Palestine, and Egypt. In the European part of empire, the Taksim has also left important vestiges in the musics of Greece, Bulgaria, and Macedonia, and to a lesser extent, Romania. The fact that current Arabian and Turkish performance practices are not identical and were even more differentiated early in the 20th century when the first sound recordings of taksims were made in Turkey, Syria, and Egypt has not prevented Turkish, Syrian, Lebanese, and Egyptian musicians from employing the word Taksim to refer to all, all the local sub-styles of the broader Taksim genre. So after this uh, Walter Feldman's Taksim uh, uh, definition, I will start with a little uh, introduction uh, about what is Turkish art music, or we uh, usually both these terms together, the Turkish art music, or we refer Turkish makam music. Uh, Turkish makam music is one of the major art traditions in the world. The music reflects actually the philosophy and the culture 
of the Ottoman court reign over 600 years and it embraces the cultures and the traditions of the civilizations and the identities lived in Anatolia. So the second topic is this music uh, has survived as an oral tradition for centuries and utilized a teaches, teaching method called meshk. The method involves teaching and learning the rules by repeating and memorizing as well as the teacher passes the philosophy of music and life in general. Shortly, meshk is the teaching method between the master and the apprentice. Today in Turkey, we can say that the musician is reliant on the written score, similar to the Western notation system, but still best way of learning this music is from a master musician as the notation lacks some of the important stylistic characteristics of the music such as ornamentations. Uh, it is left to the performer actually during the performance uh, but there were uh, I can say that there were older notation systems such as Kantemir's in the early 18th and the Hamparsons on the late 18th century it was during the reign of the Sultan Selim III who was a composer himself but uh, we should uh, keep this in mind that these notation systems never used during the performance. Actually, they rather they served as a written source and compilations of the early music repertoire. Then if we come to the 20th century, uh, Turkish Republican period, Rauf Yekta Bey, Rauf Yekta was the first modern Turkish music theoretician who introduced a modified notation system and it uses a number of microtonal accidentals needed for the Turkish makam music. With the revisions of uh, Yekta's colleague, Ezgian Aral, since the 30s, 1930s, a the theoretical system is still used, which is called Ezgi Aral Uzdile 24 note system. Today, the current repertoire, if we would like to talk, is derived from different sources. So 20th century sources, you can imagine, they are already in Western notation and transcriptions of compositions from the older musicians' memories and from the historical collections and the notation systems like the one we mentioned above. And also uh, religious, we should keep in mind that religious and ethnic minorities and women were also prominent in the repertoire. Uh, 17th century Polish convert to Islam Ali Ufki Bey, 18th century Moldovian Kantemir, Greek Zaharia, Tamburi Itzak, he was a Jew at the court of Sultan Selim III, Hamparsum was Armenian, and Dilhayat Hanım, a woman from 18th century harem, still recognized with her instrumental compositions. So, uh, Neva, would you like to continue? Neva Uca will uh, kind of... So, it's the second subject. Then after my introduction, I would ask Neva Uca to uh, tell us what is, what is Makam. Thank you and good evening, uh, everybody, again. Uh, I would like to continue with the Makam topic. Uh, Makam is one of the principal characteristics of Turkish classical music, uh, which is can, can be defined as a set of rules of melodic development is called seyir, that gives, gives the Makam scale its character. A scale without a seyir uh, cannot be called a Makam. Uh, there are hundreds of makams in theory, but the most common ones are approximately 60 and 70 makams, and each one of them has a special name like Rast, Ushak, Beyati, Bestenigar, Hijaz. Uh, and the title of the, uh, title of the composition includes the name of the makam, Hijaz Sassemaisi, Kürdi Hijazkar Peşrevi, Nikris Sharka. Uh, makam scales are based on tetrachords and pentachords. 
So a Macomb scale is comprised of a tetrachord and a pentachord. And the dominant of a scale and the leading tone change according to the structures of the Macomb. There are three types of melodic progression sayer of Macombs. One is Chikuji, ascending. The second, Iniji, descending. The third, Iniji Chikuji, which means ascending and descending. Even some Macombs have the same scale, like Husseini and Muhayyar. They are different makams because of their different sayer character. Husseini has an ascending and Muhayyar is an descending sayer character. Now you will be listening an example of Husseini and Muhayyar sayer performed by Ihsan Özgen. Husseini. topic of the Taksim. Taksim means division in Arabic. It's not known why this word has become the term in the musical language to describe this certain type of instrumental performance. Jinnichan Tanrı Korur, an important figure, writer, composer, and the wood player, gives a definition for Taksim. Taksim is an improvisatory composition which demands both the knowledge to describe a makam seyri, all right, and the ability to put forward original music ideas. In this respect, Taksim unavoid, uh, unavoidably requires ability of the performer. 
The musical ideas in Taksim can be rooted in simultaneous feelings, imagination, background, and wisdom within the border of composition. Taksims, or generally all improvisations, have some rules according to the music traditions that they belong to. For example, in classical jazz, improvisations are played within the harmonies suitable to certain chords and uh, previously given number of measures. On the other hand, taksims can be played either within certain makam and forms or within a free form. In Turkish makam music, a traditional taksim should have the right characteristics of a particular makam. The performer should demonstrate the melodic structure, seyir, and the certain degrees of makam. Taksims are named according to the name of the instrument and the name of the makam, such as Shehnaz Taksim with tambur, Nikriz Taksim with kemençe, or Ras Taksim with violoncello. Taksims are played without the boundaries of rhythm in contrast with the written music. Instead, a fluctuating tempo or tempo in a rubato character exists when phrases are considered. Also, the taksims are played as slow, moderate, or fast according to their type or to the music piece that follows. Taksims that are played among folk dance music called oyun havaları can be shown as an example of fast taksims. It has been widely used with little differences in Mevlevi sect ceremonies, which is called Mevlevi Aini in Turkish, and fasils, which are sacred and secular, secular respectively. While the uh, vocal taksim form, kaside, exist in Sunni sect, there is a taksim of ney instead of kasides in the rituals of the Mevlevi sect, and the ney taksim takes place twice in the ceremony. Thank you, Neva. And also, I would like to continue uh, with describing uh, how we classify makams. So we can classify makams both according to the, where they are used and according to, to the way it is performed. So um, the taksim that introduces the makam at the beginning of a concert or a fossil form. It is called girish taksimi, which is lead-in, introduction. And also middle taksim is ara taksimi, is as you can uh, imagine, a taksim in the middle of a concert or a fossil form, an interlude, is played in the middle of a concert in order to let other musicians and vocals to have a rest, in fact. During this taksim, the performer can also have modulation, which is called geçki in Turkish music. If the purpose is to switch another makam during the concert, so the taksim is called geçiş taksimi, transition taksim. And uh, as we said, also a taksim can be classified according to the way it is performed. A solo taksim uh, is the one that the performer is alone from the beginning till the end. No other people, no other musicians. And taksims played with pedal tones and accompanied in tempo are called eşlikli taksim. Eşlik means accompaniment in Turkish. When two musicians mutually perform, it's ka karşılıklı ta taksim, mutual taksim, in which Musicians share the performance by completing each other's phrases and sentences. The last one actually is coined by uh, very important three instrumentalists on the uh, mid, uh, like on the 70s and 80s, let's say. Uh, it's beraber taksim. Beraber means collective in Turkish. And it's made the, the 
importance of this tank system is when two or more performers put musical ideas on top of each other to have more polyphony on the music and also at the same time their solo and mutual taxims appears as we said this type of taxim is coined by Niyazi Sayın, İhsan Özgen and Necdet Yaşar now I would like to have an example on this uh, collective taxim type of uh, this taxim and uh, this is as you can see it's a, from a television broadcast from 1977 uh, so you can see the picture of three musicians here so you will ha have a small you know two two minutes uh, first taxim collective taxim and it will be followed by a sasemaisi uh, which is an instrumental piece as well but we will uh, not you will not be listening all of the piece the Tamburi Cemil Bey so he was a master musician and we if we go back to the beginning of 20th century Sevgili Neva dear Neva could you continue yes thank you uh, maybe I need to to talk uh, I emphasize uh, Tamburi Cemil Bey uh, uh, the, the, because the, the three of musicians uh, that you listened a while ago uh, three of them was influenced by uh, and the, the, the school of Tambur Jemil Bey, uh, the member of the school of Tambur Jemil Bey. Uh, the recording technology came to Istanbul in uh, 1900s. Uh, the last virtuoso from the Ottoman period was Tambur Jemil Bey. As he was one of the great masters of 20th century. He recorded taxims and several compositions with the foremost singers of that time over 10 years. He was a virtuoso performer, not only on tambour, but also kemençe, lauta, rebab, violoncello, and yayri tambour. Uh, when we would like to define classical taxi form, we mean tambour jemibe style. A uh, classical taksim is a taksim that is executed in the chosen or preferred makam. It has four parts. One is zemin, 
the introduction. The second is Nakarat, the development. The third, Mayan, middle section. The fourth is Nakarat, again, the final section. A perfect classical taksim opens with the presentation of makam. After the zemin section, the main theme is played in nakarat sections. Mayan, on the other hand, shows a developmental st structure on condition that it does not move away from the main theme. High pitches can be used. It diverts from the main makam, but it returns at the end. This tension can be quite different from other sections. Following the mayan, there is again the nakarat. In this section, the melodic structures in the first nakarat section are evoked. Now we will listen uh, an example of the classical taksim uh, performed by Tambur Cemil Bey uh, in Gülizar Makam with his amazing tambur. Uh, maybe before the uh, listening, Neva Hocam, you can uh, just explain how should we listen or what should we kind of be careful about while we listen. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, the the taksim that we are gonna listen will take three and a half minutes. You can simply understand classical taksim when you listen to it. The first minute approximately is the introduction. Uh, the second minute is development. The middle section will start in the middle of the second, let's say uh, again approx approximately. And the final section starts at the end of the second minute till the end. Okay, thank you very much. Orta on record, Tamburi Jimmy Bay Karakunda. Thank you. 
you enjoyed our presentation I would like to have some uh, clues for you for further listening and reading if you are interested and uh, Taksim's you can listen to the Taksim's of Tamburi Cemil Bey, Niyazi Sayın, İhsan Özgen, Necdet Yaşar and Cinçan Tanrıkov and there are many other musicians but these names are cited in this presentation, so that's why I put the names here. So in English, uh, I would recommend some books and especially PhD thesis, three thesis in English. Uh, if you are interested, you can really search from the web and especially the PhD thesis, really, you can download if you have further interest. And um, thank you very much. It's the end of our presentation. Now, I think that we can, uh, if you have some questions, we can go with the uh, Q&A section. Yes, Alessandra, I, I think you have a question. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. This was very, very interesting and very, very um, precise because I have been following a, a course, a lesson in um, my conservatory, but it was very generic and I didn't quite get what Daxim and what Makam were about. So thank you very much. This was very, very, very interesting. Um, I've got many questions, but I'm going to just <laughs> stay with one. <laughs> Uh, so that I can very broad subject, in fact. Yeah, absolutely. But the, the thing that interested me the most is, um, uh, I think you said that uh, taxing can be played in a free form, right? Yes. And I was I was thinking about is it similar to a model approach? Do people like improvise on the scale that we actually listened to before, or mm -hmm. it's like free, like very very free? <laughs> Yeah, actually, it depends. For example, we can show uh, Ihsan Özgen's Taksim examples. Uh, for example, he has a CD, uh, Remembrance, Remembrance of the Ottoman Composers. He has a free Taksim at the beginning. He still improvises with Taksim, but not only in one Taksim. He, he kind of jumps more, more freely through many makams or he stops wherever he wants. Or Neva Hoca maybe, as an, she's also an improviser, Neva Hoca, and she's doing uh, free improvisations on Kemanche. Maybe she will have a more concise answer to that. Uh, actually, uh, uh, my father, Ihsan Özgen, Yelda uh, Hoca uh, uh, refers to, to, to, the, to the album, which is called Remembrance of Ottoman Empire. Uh, he also called this kind of makams beyond the makams, the improvisations, uh, the under the name of beyond makams. Uh, the, the, the, these uh, improvisations can be uh, can played uh, not thinking about the makams, which is, which is called modern, maybe modern uh, way of thinking uh, to to to perform the makams. Yeah, but, but this is the the, the, the new uh, improvisation uh, style uh, of uh, Turkish music, you know. But but the the classical uh, 
makam improvisation uh, can should uh, should uh, stay in the specific makam and the modulation can come and uh, can can uh, stay with uh, the, the, the the the style of classical music and then uh, the the the, the the the, the the classical forms of makam can uh, the, the classical forms of uh, taksim uh, that occurs, but the modern style of taksim, like an improvisation, uh, we can we can consider uh, the, the the different of uh, taksim style. There are there are different types of uh, taksims. Yes. Okay, thank you. I and, hope and you have the answer. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And concerning this, I was also uh, uh, wanted to ask you if you can tell us a couple of names of uh, artists that modern artists that, that use makam and taksim, like maybe mixed with other kind of music, I don't know, in other contexts, which is not classical. I don't know if you, maybe you already said it and I didn't I didn't catch it I don't know. Neva Jam, would you like to answer? She's asking uh, some contemporary performers. Actually, I mean there are lots of performers at Yes. Home. I mean uh, maybe I, I I can send you later because if actually if I'm, uh, I'm worried that if I forget you know I yeah, tell one of them yeah. because they are all our friends as well to tell you the truth. <laughs> if I, I now name someone, I will be in yes. kind of trouble. I feel. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it depends of the music that are playing. You know, uh, I cannot define uh, that. This is the classical taksim performer, and that one is the the modern uh, taksim player. And the the the the, the real, uh, I mean, the the artist can uh, uh, uh, adapt uh, to all of the the musics that he heard, he or she heard, and then they they influenced uh, what they are going to play or uh, what are the compo compose, uh, what are the compositions are, you know, it, it, for example, uh, for me, uh, it's very important to to to music that I I'm going to play after uh, my com my uh, improvisation. I will I'm I'm I'm doing the improvisations. Uh, um, I I do my improvisations uh, based on the the piece that I'm going to play uh, afterwards. I think most of the musicians in in in the uh, classical music, you know, the, the classical Turkish music players should consider what they are gonna play after their improvisations. The imp the, the the compositions uh, merge uh, the uh, their uh, improvisations. Uh, improvisations uh, for uh, the, the the music that are gonna play after after their uh, taxi. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I I I uh, I think that I haven't shared the last slide. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the, in the last slide, there were our emails. Uh, maybe at the end of the uh, presentation, I will share the last slide again. So there is a question in the ch chat box before I give the word to Manolis. Then I think we have to finish like in seven minutes, which is left. Uh, so it says, what is the importance of makam today in Turkish music? Actually, if we are talking about Turkish music, Turkish makam music, and um, Makam is the, I mean, the only principle that we follow, actually. It's the main, you know, uh, main subject still in 
Turkish art music. So I can say that. So Manolis, hello. Hello. Um, How are you? Thank you. Yelda and Neva. Neva, I'm not quite sure what you meant before uh, about when the taxim stops and then what the performers will play. Um, so during uh, a performance, there is a limit on that. So the uh, the taxim is a of specific length, and then the whole. Improvisation, composition, composition continues. Um, I'm not quite sure if I understood well, uh, or it's I mean, a whole uh, other thing. I mean, is your question about the duration of the taxi? Uh, so my, my question is whether there is a duration. So there is a duration of the taxi, and then something else begins, right? Yeah, actually, we, you know. Uh, you had all of these classifications in the uh, in our webinar. So there are lots of different types of taxims. So it really changes during the performance, duration, right. the style, and also as we said, the character rubato. But Tamburi Jemin based taxims are really we can put aside. It's really different because they are recorded just as taxims, just as improvisations. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, the recording technology at that time was very lim limited. Gramophone, it was, they were gramophone records. So uh, the, the possible limit was three and a half minutes. So it was like because of the technology, the duration, we can say. Mm -hmm. So it's really something different. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can have if you have the last question, I can have a last question. By that time, I can share you again the, the screen that I've forgotten. So my email and Neva, Neva's email. So whenever you have further questions, you can reach us, write us. And we are happy to, more than happy to, you know, answer your questions so i think that i cannot see any more questions so i would like to thank you all uh, for your presence so i would like to also remind you uh, that there's another webinar coming now traditional and transtraditional musics of the turkish mediterranean coast and will be also presented my dear colleagues, Shirin Özgün and Michael Ellison. Uh, so by the end of this week, uh, you, will, you will get a link to access the replay of this webinar during three weeks. And the second session of MOA, Medinia Air Sessions, is scheduled on December 2022. Please follow us, meaning Medinia, on social networks to know then you can sub sub subscribe. This is all from us today. Thanks a lot for being Thank and you. us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.